I think Julia, she serves it with cream, so why don't we pour a little cream. This cream comes from a really nice farm in the Berkshire. It's called High Lawn. All right, you ready? I'm ready. It looks amazing and creamy. <laughs> We're like gilding the lily with cream on top of butter. Mm. In the fall, when everybody's expecting you to serve mm. apple pie or mm -hmm. an apple fruit cobbler, like this is so different from that. Mm -hmm. And it's also not overwhelmingly appleicious, right? Yeah. It's like you get the the bread and the butter mm. and the apricot flavors too. And it almost makes the bread seem sort of croissanty, even though it's just regular white bread. Yeah, no, it's good to know that if you if you need croissant texture, just keep adding butter to, <laughs> <laughs> to white bread and bake it. This is a charlotte aux pommes, a beautifully flavored marmalade of apples baked in a toasty, buttery case. See what the French can do with just a big loaf of bread and a big bowl of apples when we do Apple Charlotte, today on The French Chef. So August is Julia's birthday month. Julia Caroline McWilliams was born August 15th, 1912. And who knew at the time how much she was gonna change the world. In honor of her birthday, I wanted to make a sweet dessert. I was intrigued by a recipe for something called Apple Charlotte. I was intrigued because I love apples and I actually wrote a book called The Apple Lover's Cookbook. She peels the apples first but I'm actually going to cook my apples with the peel. So I've taken about five pounds of apples here and I have cut them on this apple peeler core. So you just stick it on the prongs and then you spin it. Now, I've removed the peeler because I want to keep the peel on this little uh, device here is the peeling part, but I've pushed that back so that the apples won't get peeled. And I'm using red Gravensteins, which I like very much, but as long as it is, uh, has flavor in Christmas, that's the kind of apple to use. Look at that, and I can put that in with the other fruit. And I'm just gonna let this cook down for about 10 to 20 minutes. I wanna just soften these apples, but I don't wanna cook them all the way yet. It's very classic to pair apples with apricot jam. It has an, a lovely extra flavor that it's gonna give to the apples. It's sort of that, as usual, that je ne sais quoi. Two teaspoons of vanilla, and a quarter cup of rum is a very classic French flavor combination. And I'm gonna depart with Julia a tiny bit here in that I'm going to add some salt because I really like the contrast of salt with sweet desserts. And then um, I'm also gonna use a little bit less sugar. I have about three quarters of a cup here. She used one cup. And then the last thing, because this is a French recipe and this is a Julia recipe, is to add a few tablespoons of butter. And then we want three tablespoons of butter. I've got some melted butter here. And I'm going to cook it down for quite a while. I want it to get very thick. I'm gonna guess 30 to 40 minutes. As it begins cooking, you're gonna see it. It's gonna go foom, foom. It's gonna look just like a volcano. In order to make that bread base fit well and not stick when it's time to unmold, we need to cook the bread in some butter. I have cut four pieces of bread to fit in the bottom of my springform pan, and now I'm gonna brown them. And that way, when it's time to extract this, it will hopefully very easily slide out. I'm gonna take my little croutons that I've cooked in butter now and transfer them to the bottom of my mold here. And now it's time for me to check on my apples, which have been cooking for about 30 minutes now. So this is perfect now, and I just wanna show you what you're looking for. So this is good and ready. It's, it's brown, which means the sugars are caramelized, and it's really nice and thick. I actually have to use a bit of force to stir through it. I've got my handy food mill here. Now, I skipped a step at the beginning. I did not peel the apples. So I'm just gonna spoon this into the food mill and the skins are all mixed in here. And then all I have to do is turn this handle and it will push the puree through but leave the skins on top. And every so often you'll get, uh, it'll stop pushing stuff through because the apple skins cover the bottom. And then you just reverse direction which scoops up all the skins and you can do it again and it'll perfectly press everything down. And you just keep doing that until you 
process all of your apple mixture and it'll be delicious. Now let's talk about the bread. Julia um, recommended using a firm white kind of sandwich loaf. And so I got this bread from Clear, Clear Flower Bakery in Brookline. It's called Pan de Me, which is the sort of French everyday white bread. And this works really well for this dish. So we're gonna kind of do a little construction project here. We are going to line our mold with the bread. So I'm just gonna dip this bread on one side in the butter as lightly as possible. I wanna coat the outside of the bread with butter, but I don't wanna dip the whole thing and have it be soggy. The butter side goes on the outside. So I'm just gonna work my way around here and I'm going to just overlap the bread. So this is sort of an overlapping pattern. In French, this is called chevaucher. You just wanna butter it so that A, you get this nice flavor and B, it doesn't stick again. So here we go, overlapping. Now that piece is a little bit thinner. I was doing this freehand and it's not perfect, but Julia teaches me that it's okay for things to not be perfect, they can still be delicious. Tidy it up before it goes in the oven and then I'm just gonna cross my fingers and hope for the best. And now we need our filling, and the filling is ready. Here's our nice apple puree, and I'm just gonna spoon this in here. And you wanna just fill it up. This is, gonna, this is gonna ultimately be the bottom of the Charlotte, because we're gonna turn it out upside down. So, um, in this case, I'm going to butter both sides like we did with the top so that nothing sticks. Oh boy, it's a lot of butter. Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling very buttery right now, but um, you know, the French know they're cooking, so I'm gonna have faith that this is gonna be delicious. And so I'm preheating my oven now to 425 degrees, and this is going to go in there for 30 minutes. I've got my finished Charlotte here in the pan, and I am really intimidated to turn this out. So I'm gonna call my husband, Scott, over to be my moral support, and you know what? On this episode with Julia, her hers did collapse, and and she held true to her her um, aphorism of never apologize, and she went with it, and she pointed out that uh, it's just as delicious even if it collapses. Julia says, "Don't be afraid. Just do it. Have the courage of your convictions, and just flip it." Okay. And if you see the slightest sign of collapse, put the mold down on again. You can see if it begins to bulge, and then lift it up again. If it starts collapsing, just leave the mold where it is and wait. Start taking it works! Oh my gosh, ah! so good. Yeah. <laughs> so happy, it's totally holding together. Okay, now I'm gonna brush it with the apricot jam. I think it's gonna be delicious. It really is kind of cute. And the bread, the overlapping bread is super cute. I like it doing this because I think it has, I think it, what can I say about it? But I don't, I wouldn't like it just straight up and down because I think it would look rigid. We're gonna put a heart on it because we love Julia. So I've got my little heart crouton here to go right on top. I hope you'll give this apple charlotte a try in honor of Julia or just for yourself as we get into fall. So if you do make the dish, be sure to tag GBH with the hashtag you and Julia. I would really love to see how yours turns out. And remember what Julia said, there is no end to imagination in the kitchen. Happy birthday, Julia. Happy birthday. <laughs>